Hello and welcome to the first ever Optimal Alignment Health Meal Prep Session. Uh, our goal is to help you eat right, think right, and move right. These meal prepping sessions will be based on whole food plant-based diets to help you live your healthiest life, to help you live your best self, and to help you learn how to cook if you're new in the kitchen. Uh, the meal prep is going to be easy. If you don't know how to cook, that's fine because you can just follow along. Uh, today we're going to be cooking some tiki masala. Well, I hope that we will be. I've never made it before, so this will be a new experience for me as well, but I have faith that it's going to come out good. So, first thing we got to do is we're going to put the tiki masala, which is going to have lots of veggies and stuff in it, but we're going to put that over quinoa. And so first we got to get the quinoa going because we're also going to make a delicious cabbage salad, and then we're going to make Moroccan quinoa salad. And so having the quinoa is what is probably gonna take the longest of this whole process. So we gotta get that started first. So we have our pot and then we have a bag of super grain quinoa. It's not just quinoa, it also has millet and buckwheat in it. Uh, getting your variety in of your grains is a good idea. But here's a tip for you. You only need two cups of water per one cup of rice or quinoa. But this bag right here is a 16 ounce bag of quinoa. And what that tells you is that that's two cups because there are eight ounces in one cup. So we can take this bag and hopefully open it. The struggles cooking right here in the flesh. So we'll open this bag of quinoa and we know that we can dump it all the way in, but we need two cups for one cup of quinoa, there are two cups in this bag of grains. And one of these, we use low to no salt, oil or sugar in our cooking because those are all superhuman foods that get you addicted and fat. Um, and so there's four cups in this thing, it's 32 ounces. So a trick is you can just take one of these guys, dump it all the way in, and this is organic low sodium vegetable broth. When you're cooking your grains, you pro tip, cook them in broth instead of water. They taste so much better. There's so much more flavor, makes it worthwhile. So you just add one of these guys, and then you take this whole thing of grains, 16 ounces, and you can dump it right on in there. Put a lid on it, maybe we'll take a spoon. And we'll just stir it around a little bit so we make sure that we don't get any clumping in the quinoa or in the rice, whatever type of grains you're cooking. Move that around a little bit. And then we just put it on the stove. You're gonna put it on high until it boils and then turn it down to a simmer until the quinoa is done. Easy. These don't belong to us. These Pringles are not ours. They're another resident here at Optimal Alignment Headquarters. So while that's going, we're gonna get started on the next thing that's gonna take probably the longest is the tiki masala. And so what we're gonna do for that is we have our Instapot here, which is a, a new invention for me. So if any of you guys have advice or recipes or anything else you would like to contribute with an Instapot, we would love to hear that because so far this thing has been amazing and it cooks delicious food and we're just getting started. So providing you with easy recipes is really one of the main goals and to show you how quickly and easily you can meal prep good food for a week because if you don't have meal prepped, you're likely gonna make worse decisions. Um, but to get the tikka masala going, we're gonna make a pumpkin seasonal tikka masala. Get out of town. We're gonna have diced tomatoes, 30, 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes. So we're just going to open that guy, we'll get the liquids in the tiki masala first. So we'll go ahead and open up this guy, dump the whole can right in the pot. Once that's in there, then we're going to take some organic pumpkin, because this is going to be delicious pumpkin tiki masala. Obviously this is not an authentic Indian recipe because well, maybe it is. I don't know if they make pumpkin tiki masala during New Year's or not, but we're gonna make pumpkin tiki masala. 
fella because hashtag ball. So get that all in there. We're not above being basic. It also don't like it. We're so basic that we're hashtagging ball and going pumpkin with it. So what else are we going to put in there? We are going to put in some garbanzo beans. Two cans of garbanzo beans. Going to drain them first over in the sink here. Garbanzo beans engaged. Coconut milk. This is a little bit cheating because there's fat in there. But it tastes real good. So we're adding that in. Adding more garbanzo beans. So you guys get to see the whole process of cooking and how long it takes, what all goes into it. This is a fun process because when you can make yourself really good food, you don't ever need to rely on anyone else for food. And when you can make your own good food, you kind of get sick and tired of the crap that other people serve you and call it food. All right, rinsing these guys, I'm putting some water in there. You also get to see the cleanup stages of everything, which is beneficial because if you're cleaning as you go, your life is better. All right, now we're gonna cut up an onion and put that in there with it. Should be easiest way for onions. Onions suck. So, best thing I've ever found, to get them over with quick, cut off both ends. One slice into the middle there. So you can peel off a layer. You get all of this outer onion that you don't want. Of course, it crumbles in nine pieces. Get that out of the way. Then take your onion and you're going to slice it into rings here. Once you have a slice in the rings, cut right down the middle, and we're going to chop just like that. You can also do the whole thing at once if you're getting fancy you want to do it quick. Bam! Then you take one of these sides and you just go against the grain, helping that process be so much faster. Look at that. And the goal of chopping an onion is always to be done chopping it by the time it makes a crack. Put all of that in there. Okay, we got that in there. Now, we're also going to put some ginger in there. Ginger is going to get in there. Ginger has all of this nasty skin on it. You don't really have to remove all of this skin, but if you give it a nice shave on the outside, just to limit that skin, because the skin, again, is super fibrous, and you just don't have as good a time eating that. Ooh, the onion's getting to me. I might cry. Now, just the general grater, take that, and we're just going to grate this ginger right in there. Okay, we still have that quinoa now, and that water is already starting to boil. So we're watching that, we don't want it to boil over. Good, I did it 
about a one and a half inch piece of ginger. That's okay if you got a little bit left over. Let's come over here in time to turn this guy down. Beautiful. Now we're just gonna let that simmer on low until it's done. Back to our tiki masala. We have graham masala seasoning. That's gonna be one of the major things. As you can see, this is brand new. I've never used it before. So we'll see how it goes. But nutrition is experimenting, right? So we're just gonna take some, and we're gonna add a good bit. We'll just dump it in. That's kind of the basics of cooking is, you know how things, you like them to taste, so add that much spice. You don't need salt. If you need salt, add it at the table, not while you're cooking. You add good spices and herbs, you don't even need it. We're doing some onion powder, just for good measure, even though we already got a diced up onion in there. We're gonna do garlic powder. Garlic is actually the number one cancer fighting food on earth. That is a true story. Unfortunately, it irritates some people's digestive tracts, but garlic is a, has allicins, or a, I think allicins, yeah, right in paprika now. Some good shakes in there. Get that in there. Uh, and those properties, and then we're gonna do a little bit of cayenne pepper too. The properties of garlic are extremely anti-cancer, anti-tumor forming. Careful with the cayenne pepper. And also we love organic no salt seasoning from Costco, hashtag Costco. It's really good. It has a lot of things in there that actually will mimic the, um, the taste of salt on your tongue. And so you actually don't need to use as much salt if you use a good balanced seasoning. We can always use celery is also something that activates the salt sensors. Um, or um, apple cider vinegar. Vinegar is to activate the salt receptors in your tongue so it tastes salty. And if you have a little bit of vinegar, it's good for you too. So we're gonna put a splash of that in there. Get that going. And now that we have all this in here, we're just gonna mix it around. So again, this is not an authentic Indian tikka masala because of the fact that, well, we added coconut milk and, and we're actually added pumpkin in there too to make it more hashtag fall. But so we added all those things in there. And cooking is always just learning, right? You learn, you grow, you get better at it. If you have any ways we can get better at cooking, please let us know. We're always open for you. We're going to have more of that coconut milk in there. So two cans of coconut milk. If you want the recipe for these things, we have them available on our blog, so you can get a shopping list. And one of the services we do for people, we will do, is having a bi-weekly meal prep we'll send you your recipes and we'll even order your food for you so all you have to do is get the bags from Amazon off your front porch and then watch the video and cook along with us and hopefully we'll be doing it live soon so mixing that around and it doesn't look like there's quite as much uh, fluid in here as I would like. So I'm gonna take another thing of the low sodium veggie broth. It smells good though. That definitely smells like something I wanna eat, which is a good thing. We're gonna grab some more low sodium broth. And 
just throw a good bit in there. Uh, the Instant Pot has got some weird things when we're cooking where it's like, it gets angry at you. And it tells you it won't cook it because it's gonna burn it if it's not enough fluid in there. And we're also gonna be adding a bunch of vegetables to this uh, before we are done. And so we wanna make sure we've got enough fluid to cover up the vegetables and get those done. Okay, so now we got it. If you're not, if you don't have an instant pot, you can just put this all in a pot and put the pot on the stove. It's just going to take a little bit longer. I can't even put the lid on this thing yet. Honestly, that's how it was. We did it. Says it's off. We're going to do soup and broth. And. Uh, I think it's on now. I'm really actually this new with this thing. Now it says it's on, so hopefully that thing's gonna start cooking the broth. The thicky masala, of course. You can always add more spices later, so if it doesn't taste as good when you start, F it. So if you're just new to cooking, and maybe you wanna go a little bit lighter on those seasonings just to start, because you can always add more later, but it's really hard to take seasoning out of anything. Actually, it's impossible. So while that's going, we're going to make a delicious Asian salad. If you like the Asian salads that come from Costco, that bag of Asian salads that everyone eats all the time, that's actually where we got the idea for this, except it's whole food plant-based and it doesn't have uh, oil in it or any of the dressing. I don't know if that one has oil, but um, this is just better for you. So we have a red cabbage. Red cabbage, true story, has, is a superfood. Not just a superfood, but we just learned recently that uh, red cabbage per dollar has got more antioxidants than any other food on earth. Like, like five times more than goji berries, like way more than blueberries, like literally, like so many antioxidants, it's crazy. So with that being said, red cabbage is gonna be on the menu a lot because it's that good for you, it's insane. And it lasts forever and it tastes good in food. So to chop the cabbage, we're just gonna slice it. Literally, start at the top, we got the little nub in here, we're gonna start at the other end. Slice. And we're just going right down that whole thing. Going right down it. And then we get to this end of it, we're just gonna go around it. And Rotate it a little bit. Me, me. Right, rotate it more. Rotate it again, last side, and we end up with this, which goes into the compost. So once we have this guy, we take it, same almost idea with the onion, except you don't need to cut as much, just cut it right down the middle. And then for good measure, maybe cut it once down the other side. So you're cutting it into quarters. Doesn't matter if it's exact. Okay. We're gonna put this in a bowl. Get all the scraps in the bowl. Bam. And the next thing we're gonna put in there is shredded carrots. Now, if you want to dice up carrots yourself and shred them and put them through the grinder, you're welcome to. But you can also buy organic shredded carrots in a bag. It's going to save a lot of time and it's worth it. So we take those shredded carrots and go boom. Oh my gosh, it's already pretty. Already beautiful. Now, also with that, we're going to add some crunch. Like we have some little crunchy things in the taco in the Costco Asian salad. We're gonna add some pepitas, organic pumpkin seeds, whole bag, wow, just like that. Then we're gonna add sesame seeds. Sesame seeds are gonna add some nice crunchy texture, get some color to it, make it just kind of pop and be fun in our mouths. And we're gonna add those in there. About half, quarter, a third to a half of like one of these little jars of sesame seeds is what I just put in. Um, and then, of course, 
you have to add cilantro. Cilantro is good. Cilantro is a weird thing where some people have a taste bud receptor that makes cilantro taste like soap. And I feel so bad for those people because cilantro is so tasty. So you just take the cilantro, you're just gonna cut it up. I got two things of cilantro here. Cutting it in, you know, maybe a third of an inch slices, quarter of an inch, I don't think it matters that much what you do. But you get down to the end of it, try to use all of your precious plants, and you put all that into the salad bowl. Bam. Emerald, bite it. Now you got this whole thing, what else are you gonna put in there, you say? Because that doesn't sound that good. So, it is an Asian salad after all, so how about some rice vinegar? Rice vinegar, vinegars again are so good for your body, they're good for your digestion, good for the pH balance of your stomach, they're good for detoxification, um, they're good for so many, I'm putting quite a bit in here, you can see. And then we are going to cheat a little bit now, a little bit of date syrup. This is the only sugar that we're going to add to this whole concoction and dish. Um, I think that thing's working. I don't know. It says it's on. Timer hasn't started yet. I just don't know how it works. I should watch more YouTube videos. <laughs> but it's epic. And so I'm just like, you know, I'm using literally maybe a all of that big spray was like, I don't know, a few teaspoons, maybe, not a whole lot. So then we have this lovely mixture here. And this salad is delicious and good for you. So we have this big, huge mixture, and now we're just gonna mix it. Of course, my hands are washed. And it is so pretty, oh my goodness. And my microbiome is already excited about eating all of this fibrous and delicious antioxidants. Oh, so many good things in here for you. Mm. So we're just going to continue kind of just mixing. I want to get all that oil off the bottom. We're breaking up. You need a big bowl. As you can see, I'm making a bit of a mess. But that's part of the fun of cooking. Mm -hmm. If you can get someone to clean it up, that's the best. But I'm not that lucky. Maybe you are. If you can get a deal with the spouse that you do the cooking, they do clean, great deal. Mm hmm. And that's all you need, right there. You can taste it. Mm. I'm gonna add some more rice vinegar. Just to make sure it's all nice and covered. Magical. Wash my hands, I just ate off of them. Hey, but when you're the cook, it's your luxury. You can do whatever you want, kinda, you know? You can make food how you want. You can eat while you're cooking. It's a great day. But to be sanitary, you can also use something like this. And get in there, you know. I really don't care that much, but it just makes a mess on your fingers. And I just wash my hands. Yep. And this should, it should be pretty well perfumed with the vinegar. So if it doesn't, if you can't really smell the vinegar and if the, the food doesn't look like it's covered with that vinegar, add more vinegar. If you hate vinegar, 
Ah. But as soon as you can see it, look how pretty that is. That is just pretty. Oh, and so good for you. Mm, it's a hit. I'm telling you, this is a hit. It's gold. But so now we're done with that. Our quinoa is cooking. It is nearing done. Getting there. So I know we're gonna touch quinoa, but I'm gonna stir it around a little bit just because we're doing um, a quinoa salad, and so we're gonna have to put that in the freezer right away so that we start getting some nice cold food. The salad is cold. Just as a reminder, if I didn't say that. So we've got one delicious hot dish. And that has literally only got a few more seconds on it before it's completely done. Um, so, What's next? I can hear it in the pot boiling now, so that's great. So, now you can take a second, be right back. We're coming back. All right, so now that we got the salad prepped, one of our meals, this is gonna be lunch, is gonna go with the Moroccan quinoa salad, which is almost done. So we can also start prepping the rest of that salad. And um, what else is going in that salad is going to be some cilantro and onion. Oh my god, you know what? I totally forgot to keep on that salad. And that is cranberries and raisins. This is one of the other key points that makes it so delicious. So we're literally all I'm gonna do, I don't even need to mix it, is just take a bunch of raisins and I'm gonna throw them on top. Two handfuls, two and a half handfuls, that'll be good. So that just adds some sweetness and deliciousness, if you will. Um, I'm also gonna add just a, a handful of craisins or dried cranberries, also known as. Oh, they're really stuck in here, so. One handful, two half handfuls. And now that's gonna be banging. Um, in a Moroccan salad, we're also going to have some dried fruit action. Cranberries, again, good for you. High in antioxidants, um, delicious. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna throw them in there. About a handful. Mm. I'm just gonna finish off what I got here. You can do it to your taste, but that was all I had, so end it. Done. Okay, so we got that. And we got another thing of cilantro. Cause cilantro is so good, y'all. Yeah. So again, chopping the cilantro. For this, I'm gonna do it a little bit finer, maybe a quarter of an inch, to three quarters to a, a third of an inch. So just 
smaller pieces so that I get more well distributed. And then I'm going to go a little bit farther down the stocks on this one just because it's so good to get this delicious uh, herb spread out throughout the whole thing. So we got that in there. Well, if I had a red onion, I would use a red onion. Uh, it's a little bit spicier, but I don't have a yellow onion on me today, so I'm just gonna throw this yellow sweet onion again, like so. Blam! No use taking all that time trying to scrape off the outside of the onion. Just take off a whole layer. It'll save you so much time and effort. It's honestly worth it. And just make it fast. So again, we're going to slice this guy into rings. And if no one's ever taught you how to hold the knife, my chef friend Ben Mattingly, who's one of my oldest friends, taught me, don't hold the knife like this, right? You don't have any control. Instead, grab these two pincher fingers in your hand, wrap your bottom three fingers around the knife, and then use these two fingers to hold the actual blade. And then it's much more secure in your hands and much more well attached to your whole being. So reduce your injury of cutting yourself, which is worst. Oh, hate cutting myself. So again, you can do the same thing. Let's stack that onion up in the layer rings. A little bit hard to see with the way the light is, but chop down the middle of all of them. And then I'm just gonna go Emotional cooking. I love food so much. Oh my goodness. I just I love plant based food so much. It brings me to tears. Okay, well, let's wash that because that sucks. Oh. Oh, it burns! The agony! <laughs> okay, well that's done. Now, we're also going to add a bunch of vegetables and then tiki masala, like I said. So, when you're cutting a bell pepper, you can do it a bunch of different ways. What I like doing is just shaving off the outside from the nasty seed bit in the middle. So I'm going to start and I shave off a piece, right? I don't get any of the seeds in there. Then I can take the next angle. It's like a square. I use it like a square. Take that, shave that off. Damn it, I got the seeds. It's okay. Then you just have this little tiny bit with the seeds in the center. Oh, still burning. Do you have any seeds? Shake them off, pound them off, whatever. So we're gonna use a few more peppers. Oh, my hair is being so good when we started. This is a new do. Never had long hair. But goal in life is to have a man bun. So y'all get to witness the evolution of the man bun. So many awkward stages. That was a terrible cut, by the way. Like, I have so many seeds here, it sucks. This is the whole point of the method I showed you was to avoid the seeds. But there are so many awkward stages to growing your hair out. It's ridiculous. Yeah, so we're gonna start a little bit wider this time. Oh yeah, this is a good one. This is a good one. Okay, so now we have all these peppers. And 
ones. Can take a couple, line them up, dice them lengthwise. Actually, I'm gonna do a whole bunch. You can also do this whole technique here. It's a little bit more dangerous for your hands, but more time effective. And then I'm gonna lay all of these guys lengthwise in a row. And just give them a choppy chop. Chop. And so we're going to put some of these veggies, these bell peppers, in the tikka masala. And then we're going to put some into our quinoa sad. This quinoa is now done. So I'm going to hit the off button on that. So that was, uh-oh, we finally have life out of the Instapot. They call it an Instapot, but that SOB takes so long before it actually starts cooking that it's not that instant. Like if I would have had a pot on the stove, it would be boiling way long ago. However, it is amazing how much steam comes out of that thing when you turn it off. Holy steam balls, you're gonna see. But again, that is also pressurizing it and condensing flavors and everything delicious. So as I say that it stops producing steam. Oh, here we go. <laughs> it hasn't actually started timing yet, but it just says it's there. Anyway, so we're going to chop some of these bell peppers that are going into that Instapot eventually. A little bit larger, so I don't really care what they look like, honestly. They're big chunks. Um, we don't have where to put them, so I'm just going to throw them on this little baggie that was holding the cilantro. And uh, yeah, then we're gonna dice up the other bell peppers. So for these guys, we are going to cut them much more finely for the quinoa salad. We do that same way, dicing them longitudinally, lengthwise, vertically, however you want to say it. And then, with good knife skills we have, chop it, chop it a bell pepper. Chop it a bell pepper. That's like a reference from uh, whoever that actor is who says he's slapping the bass. Slap at a base, man. He's slap at a base. Paul Rudd, that's what it is. Paul Rudd's a funny guy. So we're dicing these. And as we're doing that, we'll grab another bowl. Meanwhile, we got is done. I'm gonna take some good portion of it. Oh snap! It's the pot just hit numbers. Oh boy, that is very good, yeah. And I want this stuff to cool rapidly so we can make this salad. Oh no, it just hit and said food burn. But that guy still must be just pressurized, so I'm not that worried about it. See? It's so sassy. If you know how to make an Instapot and not say burn, let me know. Please give me your advice, because I want to know. And so we got the hot that quinoa. 
we're pressing against the sides, I'm doing this, just like a, I don't know what, like an apple pie crust or something. And that's so that it will rapidly cool. Then I'm going to take this and put it in the freezer. Right here in the freezer. It's so fucking hot. Oh my god. Sorry. So get that in the freezer. The rest of this quinoa, half of it, just gonna chill on the stove. We're done. Stove's off. We're all done with it. All we're gonna do is uh, use that to put uh, put on top of the old, um, well, underneath the hopefully tikka masala, which is oh, it's back on. Now we're at ten minutes, so it's kind of working. I don't know. Again, tell me how to use an Instapot. But, okay, well, we're going to do this first. Oh, I'm still crying from the onion. So here again, take in these bell peppers, slice them long ways. So they're, they're not matchstick, but they're about a quarter of an inch. They're about a quarter of an inch. That's, that's ideal. Again, these are for the quinoa salad, so I'm going to put those in the quinoa salad bowl with the onions, cilantro. Quinoa salad, I'm going to take a, a lemon. That's right, a lemon. I'm also going to squeeze this guy into the quinoa salad stuff. We're going to have some nice, zesty salad. If there's any questions you guys have about whole food plant-based living, and if you've still watched this far, you're the best. Thank you. We appreciate you and your dedication to your health and learning how to cook whole food plant-based meals. But so this is now going into the cilantro, onions, bell pepper mix. That's gonna go with the quinoa salad. Oh, squeeze all of it out of there. Seriously, that Asian salad though is bomb. You should be excited. You probably tried it, so you know it's bomb. Eight minutes left on the uh, Insta cooker, so that's a good thing. Um, I'm gonna bust out. Maybe, maybe I won't. Yeah, I will. For the salad, I can make sure that there wasn't anything there. But for when I, I'm gonna squeeze the rest of this guy into the Insta pot. Once I'm done, I'm gonna add all the veggies once it says it's done. So I just threw lemon in the squeezer. It's gonna go in the spot too. And also what's gonna go into the Instapot is more vegetables. So these are frozen. Um, broccoli is in a uh, stir fry California blend. Unfortunately, what I learned recently was that um, if you freeze vegetables, they um, they lose their enzymes that are so good for you. So you, cruciferous vegetables, um, or cruciferous, as uh, Michael Greger likes to say, have uh, many good things for you. In particular, one of them is called uh, an enzyme or product called sulforaphane. Um, and that is super good for your liver to help you detox, help you to, uh, it's anti-cancer, anti-tumor growth, anti um it's really good for your system. Um, and so, glucosinides, I believe, are the family that uh, cruciferous vegetables have. Something like glucosinides. glucosinides. Mm, maybe that's not right. If you know, you can come in and correct me. Happy to hear it. Um, but so we have all those things. Good. We've got this ready for that. Oh, we're also going to add some fresh and crushed dinosaur kale to the um, salad. And then we're also gonna add some to the C 
six minute left, hopefully picking this all up. So again, this is fast, right? We're 45 minutes in, we got a delicious salad made, um, we got the quinoa made, we got chicken masala hopefully almost made. Even if you're boiling it on the stove, it's gonna be delicious by this point. It's gonna be good. Uh, the nice thing about a pot on the stove is that you can actually like, you know, sample it, see how it's going. I'm just praying right now that that thing is barking and it tastes good. And it's not burning like it says it is. So, um, pros and cons. But again, for the quinoa, I'm chopping the kale into smaller chunks. Quarter, three quarters of an inch, eighth of an inch. Gonna add some wonderful color. And it's gonna add some wonderful health benefits, which we all care about so much, right? We're here, we're all health food plant-based. You're still watching. So we're doing that. And then we can chop the other veggies, the other bunch of kale, which is going to go in the pile we have here. It's going into the tikka masala. And again, I'm going to chop these a little bit more roughly, maybe three quarters of an inch to an inch, because they're going to go into a really hot solution of liquid, so they're going to shrink down a whole bunch into little tiny feathery things that are almost not even noticeable, but we're here, and that's what matters. So we got this, we got our pile of veggies, we got our lemon we're going to put in there. Um, now we're going to put some spices away. Oh, what a great time to do a little bit of cleanup. Three minutes left on this thing, or you know, however much you got. Draft on your pot, do some cleanup. Cleaning up is the worst. If I could only cook and then just not have to deal with the mess, this is a, seriously, I think, a major limiter in people cooking is the fact they don't want to clean up the mess. It sucks. But when you realize you can make better food than other people in your own home, worth it. So, worth it. Let's do some dishes. Seriously, cleaning in your go as you go or during these breaks, revolutionary. Instead of a big, huge pile at the end, when you got these nice little moments, do a little bit of housekeeping, save yourself so much time. We're recycling our cans, wasting them out. Putting all of these things away. Mm 
awkward stage of Harry's best friend. Headband. Oh. oh yeah, you see that? No more hair in the face. No more Baywatch flips. Sorry about that. Mm. It is done! We must see what we have created. If it's alive or not. <laughs> So now we just push this thing. Check this out. If you don't have ready pot, this would be amazing. It blows my mind. I'm like worried about the paint on my ceiling every time I do this. Was that all in there? Where was it? Oh shit! The smell that's coming out of that now, though. Dang. Woo! It's like I just lit a candle from Scentsy. Like a Scentsy candle just went off in the house. Like it burned the whole thing all at once. But I'm hopeful right now. By the way, that smell, wow. Still going. What in the actual F, man? This thing blows my mind. I seriously don't understand it yet. I don't get it. Wow, it smells good though. It smells like pumpkin something. I don't know if it smells like sticky masala, but pumpkin something. Brad has a little guard against condensation. So we'll see. Oh my god, it's still going. Like, it takes that long for that thing to produce all this stuff. And apparently, like, if you try to open the lid before it's done, it'll, like, blow up. Like, you hit yourself in the face with a lid and you die. Unfortunate. I think we can almost open it now. Almost. I'm going for it. I'm going to open it. We're going to do it. If you just got a pot on the stove going right now, sorry, you got to witness this Instapot phenomenon, but apparently it's one of the best ways to cook your food because you can cook it for less time and it preserves the ingredients and the nutrients in there. And so I'm trying to learn how to use it. But here we go, we're gonna open. And it makes a cute little sound, damn. And a mess, makes a mess. That smells awesome. See if we create greatness or a monster. It's definitely not as thick as sticking this out, but that's because I added the extra broth. So in hindsight, maybe I, you should have let it simmer, but like it definitely would have burned then. And here's the great part about cooking is when you cook something, and then you can try it, and then you can add more spices if you like it or not. I don't know if it's tikka masala, but it's damn good. No one's gonna complain about it. No salt, no salt in there. No sugar, no oil, not necessary. Spices, herbs, food, real food. That's unsanitary, but I don't care. 
So now, you're going to add the rest of the veggies. says six minutes on the clock. We'll see what it thinks when it gets a taste of those frozen veggies, huh? Oh, dang! Drop the lemon. Some Indian people who are like rolling over in their grave right now. That is a little view. Yeah, I think it tastes good. Oh my god, this is gonna be fantastic. Save my sup. Ooh. Bad idea. It's gonna work. cooking by myself. Now we've got this guy going. He's back on. He's still on. Oh. Um, it almost... Wow, with that lemon and ginger, it almost tastes like a, like a pumpkin tom yum soup, almost. Which is weird, but it's bomb. It's literally so good. There's no salt in there. There's no oil in there. There's no sugar in there. You don't need to add those things to make food delicious. That's one of the main points of this whole thing we're doing. And so if you're on board with no salt, oil, no sugar thing, send us your recipes. We're happy to cook them and explore. If you're not on board with it yet, cook this food. Cook it. Cook it and see what else is possible because everybody knows those things are not good for you. There is no heart healthy oil in the world. Uh, olive oil is heart healthy, blah, blah, blah. No, oil is the most nutritionally dense food on the planet at like 4,000 cal, four to 5,000 calories a pound. There's no oil that is heart healthy. There's no fat that's heart healthy. What's, and I put coconut oil in there, so I'm a little bit of hypocrite because that's saturated fats too. But, I wouldn't even need to do that, honestly. But, there's nothing else necessary other than the plants, you know? So, now we'll finish up with that quinoa salad. Good, it's nice and cooled. Everything is good. We're happy about it. Well, the bottom is not quite cool, but it'll be okay. So we're just gonna, I'm gonna take this nice, I broke up some, you can see I smashed on the edges. Now I'm just gonna break it up. I'm 
there's ways you can cook the quinoa with less liquid so that it's not as gummy. Um, but we didn't do that. Lemon in there, it smells great. The gumminess, it worked out good. It wasn't too gummy. Look at how that turned out. That turned out great. Super happy with that. And so now we've got the food. Oh, it's delicious smelling. It smells so zesty. Um, we've got food for a couple days now. You know, we've got a wonderful quinoa salad. We've got the delicious cabbage salad. We've got tikka masala. So we have lunch and dinner taken care of. And then for breakfast, we're gonna do oats and granola. You're gonna have to do granola, but oats and some fresh berries. Um, we'll be doing a video on delicious vegetarian smoothies. Veggie smoothies, they're game changer because well, it's just as many nutrients as you can possibly get inside of one smoothie. Great way to start your day, get you feeling good. It's hard to get all your veggies in sometimes, so it's gonna work. But anyway, that's a different story. The rest of that tikka masala is cooking. It's gonna finish here in a little bit, but it's delicious. Um, I hope that you tried it. I hope that you enjoyed this. If you have any well, subscribe to us for future videos in the future, first of all, because we'll be doing a whole bunch more of these. And if you would like us to do your shopping for you and to have your food show up and because you're about that lifestyle change and whole food plant-based living, we can do that for you. Um, again, we are Optimal Alignment Health. Eat right, think right, move right. Eat right, think right, move right. That's what we're about, that's what we do. Check out our other videos, give us feedback, we're happy to hear it. Hope you enjoyed, and I uh, hope you made some delicious plant-based food today. And hopefully we hear from you soon. Thanks so much.